In this video, I'm gonna show you an example from a very technical point of view, how email tracking works. Now we're gonna start from not having any tracking capabilities to spinning up a tracking server in the cloud somewhere, writing some simple PHP scripts to do email tracking. So that way, from start to finish, you know exactly how this works. And I think it does a really good job of demonstrating uh, what's sometimes called tracking pixels, which is not just limited to emails, but it can be embedded in a website, for example. So let's start out by spinning up a server. So I'm gonna use DigitalOcean Digital to do this. Um, DigitalOcean.com, I actually have some free account credits down below to get you started if you wanna follow along. And I'm gonna spin up a droplet. It's going to be a virtual private server in a data center closest to me, which at this time is in Singapore. I'm gonna run Ubuntu 22.10. And we don't need much resources at all for this simple example. So just a regular uh, server with one gigabyte of RAM, 25 gigabytes of solid state drive storage. And then I'm gonna pick a password here. And one last thing down here, I'm gonna just call this Ubuntu. So I'm gonna create that droplet. And when that finishes spinning up, I'll catch back up with you. Okay, so that looks like it's done spinning up. One of the first things we want to do is associate this server with a domain name. So I'm going to take this IP address right here and copy it. And I have a domain name called careerquitter.com in Google domains. And it doesn't matter if you got your domain from google.com or somewhere or Google domains or somewhere else. Um, just find the DNS settings for your domain name. And we want to add a DNS a record. Okay, so under type, we're going to pick a record and we're just gonna point this careercoder.com to this IP address of our DigitalOcean droplet. So we'll save that. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time for that mapping to happen between the domain name and the IP address. So we can test it out quick here. I'm gonna open up a terminal window on my Mac and simply ping careercoder.com. And if that comes back with the IP address, then we know that propagation has happened. Uh, but unfortunately it does not. So when that happens, I'll catch back up with you. Okay, we're back in our ping of careerquitter.com is coming back with the correct IP address, as you can see here. So let's control C to stop that from happening and let's use SSH to log into that server. So we can do SSH root at that IP address. And actually, no, we're gonna use the domain name instead. So root at careerquitter.com, hit enter. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? You can type yes, hit enter. It's prompting for the password for the server. So I took note of mine over here. I'll paste that in, hit enter. And now we are on our remote Ubuntu server, which is where we're gonna put the tracking logic. So first thing you wanna do, let's set up PHP. So we can install that with sudo apt install PHP. That's gonna install PHP and a whole bunch of other uh, necessary packages. So do you want to continue? We can type capital Y, hit enter, and we'll let that do its thing. All right, that has finished. And now there are basically three things that we're going to do in here. We are going to make a log file where we're going to log email events. We're going to get an image that we're going to display in our emails. And we're going to make a PHP script where we're actually going to implement the logic for tracking. So let's do those one at a time. Um, I have, I'm just going to use, you can use any image, but at this URL, uh, I have a logo for one of my websites. It's just a little diamond with a search um, magnifying glass in there. So we can download that directly onto the server with wget, the URL to whatever image you want to download dash capital O, which is the output file name, and I'm gonna call it diamond, D-I-A-M-O-N-D dot P-N-G. So we'll go ahead and grab that. And there is our diamond image. And which reminds me, we wanna be working, we just installed PHP, which comes packaged with Apache, and that creates this var www directory. And in here there is an HTML directory. So actually this is where we're gonna be wanting to work out of. So I'm gonna re-download that image in this directory. And we can actually see, if we go to our IP address, we can see um, the default landing page for Apache show up. So uh, we'll just minimize this and grab our IP address. And I forgot, we have a domain name. So let's just go to our domain name, careerquitter.com. And that's gonna load up the default Apache page. So we are able to serve things. Uh, if we go to that slash diamond, 
PNG, we should see that diamond image load, and we do. Let's go back to our server. We got our image in here. We also need a log file. So we can create an empty log file with touch log.txt. And just to make sure PHP has the correct permissions to write this file, we'll do a ch mod a plus w for write, and we'll apply that to log.txt. Now, the last thing we need is a PHP script to actually do the tracking. So we'll make a new file. I'm gonna use the Vim text editor. You can use another text editor of your choice. A lot of people find it hard, so maybe Nano is a better choice for you. So I'm gonna open up a new file called tracker.php. And in here, I have uh, some PHP code that might look overwhelming at first, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk through it with you uh, step by step. So here we have PHP open and PHP close tag. So everything PHP is happening in between here. We're gonna give a header right away that says, hey, you know, we're a PHP file, but we're actually gonna give you a PNG image. So that's what the content type line is. And we actually deliver on that promise. We do read the diamond.png image file in this directory and uh, return that. So we're not doing any type of spoofing here. But in addition to serving the image, what we do is we open that log file that we just created um, and we open it with an, an A, which means append. So every time we open it, we're gonna add a new line to it. We're gonna append to it. And so we got the log file variable. We also get the date in the format of year, month, day, hour, minute, second. We assign that to a date variable. And then we get the IP address of whoever's requesting this PHP file or this image. And we store that in a variable called IP. We take all of those variables and concatenate them together into a single string that says opened at this date and time from the IP address, that IP address, and then we tack on an end of line character, which is probably just a, a slash n for a new line. We take that entry and write it into the log file, and then we close the log file. So as far as tracking is concerned, that's about it. We will save that file and let's do a simple test. So right now our log file is empty. If we look at it cat with the cat command, no output is returned. But if we minimize this, go to careerquitter.com slash tracker.php, hit enter. We will see the image. So the PHP script is returning the image as expected. Let's see if we get a value in the log.txt file. And we do. It says it was opened at this date on this date at this time from this IP address. Um, now, I think a cleaner way to, uh, I guess, have a less um, shady link, like if somebody sees, they actually inspect that this is a tracker.php script. Oh, that's not an image. That's, that's a PHP script. Well, we can add an argument on here that looks something like this, image equals diamond.png. So at least that the URL ends in uh, a known image file extension. It's still gonna turn out the, the image of the diamond. And because we did reload the page, we should see another entry in our log. So let's check that. And we do, we see a second opened at this time from IP address. Now, the last thing to do is to simply take this image and embed it in an email, send it to somebody and see when they open it. So let's do that. You can use something like post drip to send HTML based emails. Now the problem with Gmail or any of those other popular email clients is that without a lot of work, it's hard to send HTML emails out of the box. Okay. Um, so a lot of marketing companies use services where they can create HTML emails. That's where they have all those nice pictures sometimes and buttons and stuff that you can click in your email. They're sending you an email that has HTML in it, but Default out of the box, Gmail, for example, doesn't allow you to do that. So just for this test, we will use PostTrip. It's a free email sending, HTML sending service that you can try out. Um, so we'll make a new template here. Uh, I'm just gonna call it test um, email from Tony. It'll be a blank template and I have some HTML code that we can simply type in. Let's make this a little bit big for now. Uh, we can add HTML and CSS, but we're just gonna add some HTML. 
and we'll paste that in. It shows a preview of what the email is going to look like for the recipient. And you can see that our image has loaded in here. So we'll see another log entry in here if we look at our log file. And we do. It was opened at 1049 uh, from that IP address. And now let's go ahead and send it to ourselves. Let's send this email to uh, myself at tonyteachestech at gmail.com so we can bring this up. And what we're gonna do is actually uh, watch this file, this log file, so we can see this happen in real time. So right now the log file has three entries. We'll put this over here. All right, and now we'll send that over to my Gmail inbox. And sometimes you can help, up. Oh, it already showed up. So. Uh, when I open this and when that image loads, we should see a fourth entry in our log file. So let's try that. Oh, uh, because I continued from the next video, uh, which it demonstrates that the capability of turning off automatically downloading images in email, uh, I have to click on this button that says display images below. So I'll do that. And when that image loads, we'll see that log entry happen up here. There it is open at this time from this IP address. Like I said, I do have another video that explains how to disable email tracking in Gmail, so you can check that out next. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.